Listen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most awaited talk show of the week with your host, Shan CK. So today with me, I have Willard Kache. Willard. Hey. Welcome I'm so to excited. The show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so, so much. Willard, can you please introduce yourself? Okay, so my name is Bulat Kacheri. I'm a serial entrepreneur, um, venture capitalist, social capitalist, um, yeah, capital markets analyst. <laughs> I have many things, but um, at the end of the day, um, my friends call me a man of faith. So that's basically Bulat. Yeah, that's short and precise, straight to the point, I guess. <laughs> yes, very. Well, that's that's quite impressive. So. I remember when I was going to your website and it says God, wisdom, money, power, and respect, which yeah. means God comes first in your life. You're a Christian. Definitely. I, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, strong Christian. I grew up going to Zayoja. Um, most people know it around the world as um, Ford in Faith. Yeah, born and bred, or rather, born and raised in Zayoja, rather. And uh, yeah, but anyway, yeah. That's my mantra, God, wisdom, money, power, respect, yeah. What motivates you? <sighs> That's a very good question. What actually, my reason why, my reason why is what motivates me the most. Um, my reason why being, at this point, my reason why being, I want to retire my parents. Um, I feel like they've worked for so long. They've given me everything that could, they could possibly give me and they still continue doing it. But I'm tired of seeing them wake up every day and work. So... I think, yeah, that's the reason why I do what I do. It's the motivation behind it, because some days, like I was explaining just before we started, you can see the bags under my eyes. But, yeah. you know, I was, I was up working. So, yeah, my reason why is what motivates me, which is uh, something I actually learned a couple of years ago. Yeah, so that's about it. Okay. So basically what motivates you is... The reason that your parents have worked hard for you guys and now you think it's time for them to rest yeah because uh, i mean they say they say charity begins at home so what i want to do is retire my parents first and then through my foundation i want to you know i want to help other people i want to see them grow i want to i want to just have a hand because um i'm, I'm not going to call myself a philanthropist um, i'm not going to do that but i'm just someone who likes to help out a lot which is something I also learned from my parents. They helped out a lot of people who have in turn come back and, you know, they've given back to my family so much. So, you know, um, yeah, I, I just thought it was a nice thing. I've, I grew up like that. So, yeah, so it's my parents first and then, you know, just, you know, being, being there for other people. But, you know, you can't do that if you don't have the means, if you don't have the resources. So, in order to get the resources, we got to work. And in order to work and achieve what you want to achieve, you have to be motivated. So, yeah, that's the motivation behind it. What's your greatest fear? I fear nothing. You fear nothing. <laughs> you fear nothing. Um, actually, um, there is one thing that I fear, though. Um, I realize this about myself. I, I am afraid of what I can do due to people so the extent to which my mind can take me when I really think of you know um revenge but it's not something that I practice um a lot hopefully not at all I don't really I don't really recall but yeah I think that's the only thing I fear everything else is pretty no I don't I don't fear nothing yeah ah, so that's the only thing you fear revenge yeah I, I think so like you know, I, I don't and think how, I fear anything. <laughs> I, I don't know. Or well, maybe I just don't know. But I'm how do just you like, manage that? I don't know. Constant work, constant work on my mind. Um, I feel like fear is like a block in, in my mind. Mm -hmm. So I, I stay away from those kind of things. So probably I do fear some stuff. But then probably when I'm faced with it, like I just kind of block it out and just keep it moving. Because fear is definitely a block for me, and I, I can't I can't afford to be blocked. I need to stay focused. I need to keep my eyes on the price all the time. So, hey, at the end of the day, um, I guess I, I don't fear anything because um, you know. And obviously, being a Christian, like 
I, I just leave it all to God, to be honest. It's really, you know, let go and let God. So anytime I feel some sort of, you know, um, fear creeping in, I guess, I'm just like, let go and let God, you know? So hence the man of faith, because, you know, like sometimes people are just like, you're crazy. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But at the same time, you know, I serve a mighty one. So, you know, and he does things that we don't understand. So you can call that crazy too. So I think we're in the same WhatsApp group. How do you define success? How do I define success? Yes. I think success for me has to be when I'm at a level where I feel like I have, you know, I, I have done it. There's no, I think it's different for everybody. Look, because the thing is, we, we all grew up different circumstances. We're all raised in different circumstances. So when you're on the come up, you know, someone who grew up less privileged, as soon as they can have the family of their own and their family is not struggling to them, that could be success for, for someone who grew up, you know, having it all. Uh, yeah, for someone who grew up having it all, you know, it, it's, it's the norm for them. But maybe them um, leaving the country and, you know, um, doing better than their parents, you know, that's success. So for me, I guess, but for me, it's, you know, as long as, I think success, I measure it every day, actually, every day, as long as I achieve something new every day. And as long as I'm making, you know, progress one step at a time for me, that that's success, because, you know, there, there's no, I, I don't think there, there's a bar where I can be like, you know, that is success because yes. we, you know, I, I've, I've grown up different from others and, you know, I am my own person. So yeah, yeah that's how I true. define success. <laughs> Yeah, and especially when you said um, until you reach a, st- a certain level that you will actually say, okay, I think I've achieved this and that and that. So to me, this is success. I was actually going to say, um, I remember Maslow's theory, the self-actualization one. And yeah. he says that yeah. you never really reach it because at the end of it all, when, you, when you've gotten that thing, you're like, oh, yeah, now I want to do this and that and that and that and that. So, what's your favorite aspect of being an entrepreneur? I, I think signing deals. I love this thing about signing stuff. I just, you see, I've always, I've always got my pen with me. I'm always writing. I like signing stuff. Man. I think that's what I like being an entrepreneur. Now, okay. Um, on a more serious note, um, I think the challenges. I think the challenges where you're faced with something. And okay, for me, I think I'm a person who likes, um, you know, living on the edge. Funny enough, my very first company is actually called Quick Edge. And the, the tagline is limitless possibilities on the edge. This is because I used to be faced with so much on a daily basis. And people would think, you know, this guy's not going to make it out. And half the time I'd leave things last minute. You know, I'm just living on the edge all the time, you know. And that adrenaline rush every single time, you know, it kind of motivates me. So... Yeah, so for me, it's staying on the edge, staying on your toes. That's that's really my favorite aspect about being an entrepreneur because you never know what happens next. But at the same time, things always work out. So that's why, you know, hence the limitless possibilities on the edge because when you're on the edge, so much can happen and your life can literally change like that. So I think that that's, that's my, yeah, that's my most favorite part about being an entrepreneur. Okay, but are you not? Are you not? Are you not afraid? Afraid to what? To fail. Yes. Well, my mentor always used to say to me, "Fail stands for first attempt in learning." Look, no one. Here's what I know: I have failed enough times, right? And I will continue failing. But what I did after the failure is what mattered to me because I've seen the progress. So for me, I'm a person who reflects a lot. I reflect every single day. Every single second, I'm thinking, okay, how could I have done that better? Did that go well? You know, stuff like that. So if I fail, you know, sometimes even when I don't fail, I still feel like I failed because I didn't execute it the way I wanted to, you know, execute it. So, you know, it then comes on to how I define failure. But at the same time, you know, I, I can fail. I don't mind because that's how I learn. And I don't think anyone has ever gotten anything, you know, on the first go, you know, some people on the second go, some people on the 10th go, but hey, look, all the great men in history, 
they failed. So, you know, what's so special about me? I can fail, but I can also get back up and also achieve what I want to achieve. You know, how many times, how many times did Thomas Edison uh, fail to create um, the, he's the light, light bulb guy, right? Is he? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. How many times did he fail? You know. 1,000 and yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah. I, I, think, I think I'm over it. I, I think failure is something you get over. Once you've failed enough and you've seen how failure helps you, you get over it and you just move on. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I think, actually. Okay. So what has been your most uh, satisfying moment in business? That, that's, a, that's a good question. That's a very good question. Because, you see, I'm still someone who's, you know, I'm still, I, I still call myself, you know, a, a startup business owner. I'm, I'm still starting out. You know, I've mm-hmm. been in the game for years, but I'm still starting out. So, you know, I, so I don't think most satisfying. Oh, I think the most satisfying thing is just going against what everyone else believes. That, that's the most satisfying thing for me. And it happens every single time. So take, for example, my, one of my, my that's was, that wasn't one of my friends, one of my acquaintances said to me, you can only have a foundation when you know, you're making a million plus. And I asked him, why, why do I have to wait to make a million before I start helping our kids? And you know, just other people in general. And he was like, oh yeah, you, because you wouldn't be able to afford it. And I was thinking, you know what? You know, if I've got 50 bucks in my pocket and someone else needs that 50 bucks, you know, more than I do. If I take out that 50 and I give them I've, I've made a difference. So what's the problem? You know, so actually starting up the foundation was definitely one of my most satisfying moments because, you know, it, it just kicked off. It kicked off. No, no sponsors, nothing. It was whatever I've got, I can put it in. You know, when I do have enough, I can, you know, I can share. If I, we make a plan, we make, we just make it work. So I think that's one of the most satisfying things, you know, just going against what everyone else believes is supposed to be, you know, the route you're supposed to take and you're just like, no, nah, I'm going to go the other way, you know? So, yeah, and just being out of, like, being out of my comfort zone, that's probably the most satisfying thing, actually. Yeah, take that one. Most <laughs> satisfying thing is being out of your comfort zone. That's the best thing ever. Okay, so it's being out of your comfort zone for you. Okay, so yeah. what do you attribute your success to? Um, all the all the things that I've been taught, the basics. Funny enough, when you, when you look at it, you see our generation wants to wants to create. They want to create the new basics, you know, make things that are not okay okay, and they want to change everything. But if you really look at it, you know, if you go back to the basics, you know, our parents did a good job teaching us the basics, and you know, from there you can only modify the basics for the better. You can't change everything. You know, so the routing, the routing for me, that's what I'll attribute all the success I've had so far to. Because look, if it's not, you know, me believing, you know, me believing in God, having strong faith, you know, me just always being respectful to others, you know, helping out when I can and all that, you know, it's, yeah, it's all that. So I attribute all the success to the basics, you know, that I've been taught and I've just been able to, you know, do it over and over again time and time again until now and i'm still learning because sometimes you go so far off and then you bring yourself back and you're like oh yeah you know what let me get back to the basics and then you go back to the basics and it starts working again so yeah that's that's it for me the basics that's where it's at okay so the basics that your parents taught you parents teachers everyone because i i look at my life and all the lessons i've learned junior school high school uni you know our mentors friends ev- so the basics every and yeah the basics and everything else that i just i i take in from everyone else you know that's what i attribute the success to yeah i, I think that's all yeah and, and a little bit of work ethic you know i gotta give myself a, a bit of credit which is you know a bit of work ethic you know in there <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Okay, so um, do you think there's a formula to, you know, to winning? Do you think there's a formula to being a very successful entrepreneur? Uh, hmm. Actually, to some extent, 
Yes. What's yours? You know, the best copier wins. My mentor always used to say that. The best copier wins. Why? Because I don't have, to, look, there are other people that have done most things before me. I don't have to create a whole new strategy. It's already there. I can see it. I can modify it. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to find new new ways of, you know, motivation or whatever, because it's already there. All I got to do is consume, you know, consume, improve, go, consume, improve, go. So, yeah, th there's no formula really, you know, it's just everything that's there. Just take it in and then just, you know, tailor make it to suit what, what you need and, you know, keep it going, I guess, because most people want to, you know, they want to, they want to do the exact same thing that, their mentors did. And I remember the one time before joining this, I remember the one time before joining this network marketing company, this one, um, this one leader from church, funny enough, um, was like to me, hey, that thing doesn't work. I joined it, A, B, C, D, told me a whole lot and everything. And I was like, okay, cool. So I went there and they told me, look, here, here's the formula. You know, here's what we did. This is what you need to do you know, find what works for you and get it done. And I got it done. And in no time, I was, what, ranked number three in the whole of Asia Pacific. So I was like, huh. you know, so at that point, you know, for me, that was success. So at that point, I didn't have, it worked for me and I didn't have to create a whole new thing. You know, then I realized that the, the one of the elders from church, the one who was telling me that it doesn't work, when I then sat down with him and I was asking him, what exactly did you do? He started explaining all the things that they told me not to do is what he was doing. Obviously, he wasn't going to succeed because someone else had done it that way before and so that obviously doesn't work. But in yeah. his own understanding, he thought, you know what, I'm going to go against everybody. You know, so it's not always about, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to follow the crowd. Sometimes it's a simple thing, you know, you can't say, one plus you know if we know that one plus one equals two you can't then come out and say you know what i'm going to take three halves at one and then minus this and then whatever because if that answer is not two at the end of the day and we're trying to achieve one plus one equals two then you know you've just wasted your own time so yeah that's it for yeah, me so, okay so do you have a specific uh self-control mechanism that you follow self-control mechanism I think, yeah, actually, pro probably I do this a lot. I, I, I'm a very good listener. I stop, mm -hmm. I look, I just analyze what's going on. That, that's how I calm down, literally. I stop, I look at what's going on and then I'm just telling myself, like, is it worth it? So I start asking myself these questions. You know, as I told you, I'm always reflecting. So I'm asking yeah. myself, is it, is it worth it? Do I really need to do this? Am I gonna die if I don't do this? You know how's this going to benefit me and then i just kind of slow down and then that's it that yeah because at the end of the day you know it, it's really it's really tempting to get into all these things you know even even arguments oh my god i love arguing yo oh, when i've got time i would take i would bring it to you but at the same time you know at some point even during the argument you know you can tell someone is getting a little you know uncomfortable they're getting angry yes. at that point you know it's like even I'm, I'll probably be getting angry also, but then you got to step, take a step back, breathe, you know, look around, what's really going on, analyze the situation and then take it from there. So I guess that that's my, that's my coping mechanism. What's yours? Mine? Well, I think reading. Reading? reading. Yes, reading. So when you're mad, you're going to read? Yes, I will read and I'll... I'll probably read a book and I will start it and finish it in one day. Reading. Yeah. Oh, okay. Reading. So I'm guessing you read quite a lot then. I do. And uh, while we're talking of reading, a good leader is, um, is a reader. Do you have certain books that you read? Do you have a book list? What are your favorite books? My favorite book of all time is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That ah. one, <laughs> it took me from here to there. And I've never forgotten that book. So yeah, How to Win Friends and Influence People, that being number one. Mm -hmm. Number two on the list has to be The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I like rich dad, poor dad, funny enough. Yes, I, that's, that's someone, a very nice one. Yes, someone, someone wanted me to read that book back in 2008, but believe it or not, I only read that book in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are the books? Um, Gary V, Crushing It. I like that book. Mm-hmm. Love it, love it. Uh, what's the other one? There's one more. I know there's one more. Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. I've got a whole list. I can, I can continue going. Oh, my word. Principles by Ray Dalio. Uh-huh. Magic. Uh, I think that's about it for now. But I've got a whole list. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, I might spend the whole hour talking about books. But yeah, I, I do read. Um, actually, I listen because um, I'm always on the go. So I always have my earphones on. I've, I listen to audio books. That, that's what I do. Yes. Okay, so do you believe in destiny or do you believe that you can control your fat? To some extent. To some extent, I feel like God has awarded us the power to, you know, we've, give, we've been given the power to choose. So we do have choice, but I don't think I can really control the destiny because, you know, it's really set, it's there. I, I mean, I can change a couple of things during the way, like, you know, on the, on the journey, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's something I've never really thought about. I think I'd have to sit down and actually look into it and think. Yeah, but that's a very interesting question. I'd like to know what. <laughs> what's your take on that? Do you think? Do you think that we create our own destiny? Yes, I think God has given us the power to control our own destiny. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe I control my destiny. This could turn into a debate because I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you now. Um, so if you if you have the power to choose, then what about those things that you wanted but then they didn't happen? Then how how do you then you know how do you then explain that? How it do I then explain? Well, it was lack of faith. Well, I'll I'll say it was lack of faith. I'll always say it was lack of faith. I probably didn't have enough faith. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. That's a very diplomatic answer. I like that. Okay. <laughs> so my next question is, um, you know, in today's world, you know, especially in Zimbabwe, we have got so many businesses, we've got so many companies, you've so many competitors, right? What's your um, uh, what's your company's uh, competitive advantage over your your competitors what's your advantage over your competitors i think our company culture see they always say um you know charity begins at home it's the company culture first you know it starts with what, you, what makes you what makes your company stand out yeah from all the so, other companies that we have yeah so for us right when most people are thinking local we're thinking international when most people are thinking one, we're thinking 10, you know, it's always thinking ahead, you know, just, just being in a position where, you know, you're thinking different, you know, that's, that's basically, actually, that's the whole competitive advantage, thinking different. You can't do what everyone else is doing and expect a different result, you know? So we always put in work, you know, just be it first, everyone, everyone in my company, everyone, if you work for me, we have to we have to do self development because i need you better every single day i need you growing every single day because when you are better guess what you're better for the customer you're better for the company and everything goes better like that so yeah definitely so it's a company culture that we have and then you know just obviously looking at the things that everyone else is not doing yeah you know you got we could be selling the same pin but there's definitely something different but about our pin. Even if you can't see it, we're going to make you believe it because, you know, we're better in one way or the other. So be it, be it as our customer service, you know, it's just, it's just simple things because, you know, you just have to make your customers believe. You just have to make your customers believe that you're better than everyone else and everyone will start flocking to you. How many artists do you know that, have really good songs but they're not they're not top of the charts yet they just haven't managed they just haven't managed to make everyone else believe otherwise you know some of the highest ranked 
artists in Zim don't even perform to that level, you know? So yeah, you just, you, it's about you being sincere and you just, you know, creating an environment that will make everyone else believe. And look, at the end of the day, you gotta wanna help people. You know, sometimes in business, you know, we, we think that, you know, life is just, you know, binary, it's zeros and ones. But then at the same time, we actually forget that, you know, if, if you come to my company and I'm selling, if I'm selling mud flasks, right? And you tell me that you need something with a handle and then I'm trying to sell you something like this without a handle, what am I doing? Yes, it's business at the end of the day, we need to make a sale, but instead, instead, if what happens if I say to you, no, look, we don't have one with, with the handle, but I know somewhere else where you can get it. You know, what have I done there? You know, I've kept it real with the customer. I've now given the customer what they, they really need, what they really want. So next time they want something, guess what they're going to try first? They're going to try yeah. us because, yeah, yeah they're going to try us because they know that we have their best interest at heart. Because nowadays it's more of people just talk, you know, people just talk and then they're like, oh yeah, you know, we have our best, oh, we have our customers' best interests at heart. But then that's not really what's happening. So yeah. So company culture, definitely very big competitive advantage and, you know, just working in unity. And, you know, that's where the magic is at for me because I've seen it work. I've done it a gazillion times and I'll continue to do it. Okay. So you said um, company culture and you said at your company, everyone goes through self-development, right? Yeah. How do you, how do, you do that? The self-development do do? part. All right. So let's say if, if we're reading a book, we'll say, guys, we're reading this book, right? And we will have reflections. So at the end of the week, we'll have reflections. Like, what did you learn from the book? You know, learning circles. We sit down, we talk. Like, what did you learn from the chapter? You know, stuff like that. And whenever I can, I'll just round up everybody and I'll be like, guys, I came across this and that, even in the company group, guys, this is what I came across, you know, and some, so for some people, it's not, it's not normal. It's not natural for them, but then you have to kind of put them in a position where, where they're growing. Because here's what happens. If your team doesn't grow together, there'll be a big gap between how one person does something and the, how the other person does, does um, something, which is a problem. Because what you, need as a, what you need as a company is you need consistency. You need people to see that everything is uniform. And once you've got that look, like they'll keep flocking. Customers will keep flocking back. Trust me when I say that. Okay. So if you're given the chance to go back where you started, what one thing would you change? I'd listen better. I'd be a better listener. And I'd pray for more wisdom because for the longest time, I've always wanted to lean on my own understanding. I thought I was better. You know, I, I thought I knew it all, but that's not the case. Mm -hmm. You know, some, sometimes it's okay. You know, it's, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to be in a position where you actually don't know something. So take, for example, when I started Forex trading, right, this guy, this guy approached me, funny enough, it was from Instagram. And I, I looked at the company. I was like, you know what, this is great. I verified their website, everything. I was like, you know what, I can do this. I can really do this. And then they simply said to me, look, what you need is full mentorship. And full mentorship is going to cost you $500. But for me, I was like, why do I need full mentorship for something I can find on YouTube? So I went on YouTube and I started learning, right? I learned all the right things, but in all the wrong orders. So everything was just jumbled up in my head. I didn't know what to link and whatever else, right? So in due time, I traded for about six, seven months. And in those six, seven months, I lost about six to $7,000. And then guess what, guess what I did then? I paid yes. the 500, I paid the 500 for you mentorship. Could have just done. I could have done that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have really just done that from the beginning. I would have saved myself a good 6.5, you know, 5.5, whatever. I forgot how much it was, but it was somewhere around there. You know, so if I was to go back and change anything, I'd listen better, I'd listen better and ask for help because that's one thing I've noticed. We're so afraid to ask for help and there are people that are willing. There are people that are willing to help us out there. So, yeah. 
Okay, so on your website, it says that uh, you've got various qualifications. What are some of your qualifications? Oof. I did a lot. Back in uni, I did a lot. And even after uni, I'm always trying to learn something new. Do you believe, can you believe that I've actually got, um, I've got a qualification in gambling? <laughs> responsible service in gambling. Yeah. And responsible okay. service in alcohol. Um, I've got, I've got um, certificates in dementia. Like, you know, like simple stuff like that. Um, food security, you know, that, that's on the minor side. You know, otherwise in school, I actually studied um, cyber forensics, you know, um, cyber forensics, information security and management. And then somewhere in the middle, I was like, ah, nah, nah, not doing this. And then I studied international business and marketing. And yeah, mm -hmm. but, and then I just did a whole lot of other stuff, just a whole bunch of other courses that I did in my time. So yeah, those are my qualifications. But for me, I don't know what it is about looking at qualifications because I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just damaged because I know for a fact that some of my friends, um, when I was doing cyber forensics for the, I did it for about two years. For those two years, they copied all my assignments, all of them. And, you know, when I asked them to code something for me after they graduated, they barely could code anything. So. I think after that, I was like, you know what? Qualifications might just be a myth to some extent, you know, because ah, I don't know. I don't know, but hey, we still got to get them anyway. Otherwise, you know, my mom must kill yes, me if that's, I don't. That's very true. Mm -hmm. So uh, you were in Australia, right, for school? Yeah, yeah. Is that where you started? Is that where I started, as in business? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, actually, I lied. I'm sorry. Officially, yes, I started in Australia, but um, from the tender age of what, grade six, my dad always used to give me responsibility because my dad is into mining. So he used to give me responsibility, you know, simple things like, you know, just passing on orders to the guys from the mine and just doing stuff when he wasn't there. When I went to high school, my dad started, I think my, my first contract line was actually when I was grade six. Yeah, my dad gave me a contract line when I was grade six. By the time I got to form two, I had two contract lines. So, you know, he really trusted me to handle what needed to be handled. You know, it was minor things, but then those are the things that told me like, you know what? I probably won't like working for someone else. That was the truth. Just didn't like working for someone else after that. So after that, when I was about at school, I just used to find a way to make money somewhere, somehow. Someone needed something that I had. So I, need, I needed to make sure that I had everything that any kid in school could possibly need. If you needed, if you needed, uh, if you needed a spanner, funny enough, you'd find me. I would have a spanner somewhere. I'd find it, you know. And that's how it started. It started with small little things like that. And I didn't even know that it was, you know, cultivating a culture of business inside me um, until we got to about maybe O levels, O levels, O level break. I used to, I used to have problems with my phones all the time, so. I went and the guy who used to fix my phones, I used to watch him fix phones, watch him fix phones. And I did that all throughout all break to a point where now I could fix my own phones. So now I got the little kit and then every time I like went back to school and anytime my phone died, if I could fix it, then then I just, you know, I'll unscrew it and then I'll do that. And then I started actually fixing other people's phones, you know, and I'll call my guy and be like, yo guy, what do I do here? And I used to charge them for it, you know, and yeah so after that and then you know after that i started working for my dad and then i took two years out of school um, before i went to australia then i got to australia and i remember one time um, one of my really close friends now is probably he's actually one of my best friends now we were sitting in the kitchen and he was like you know what we need to we need to officialize our companies so whilst i was still thinking what i'm going to do because i knew i was good at marketing but he was just like, you know what? And we're eating at this point. He's like, you know what? The one thing that's always going to be valid is food. People are always going to eat. So he started his catering business and, you know, the rest is history. And then that's where it all started until now. You know, we, we, just, we just do what we're doing. So, yeah, that's how it all started. Okay. How was it like 
you know, owning a business in a foreign country. So funny enough, our, our businesses were registered in Zim. So we were running our businesses from Australia, from Perth. And Perth is what, six hours ahead? So we were six hours ahead. So we were always up. We were always up because when people finish work here, it'll be midnight. You know, it'll be 11 p.m. midnight in, in Perth. So we're always up communicating and everything. And we found a way. We created systems to, you know, to run the business and we got trustworthy people to run the business here. And then for me, I had an opportunity to join a network marketing company, which you basically owned a business in 25 countries where we could supply, uh, what was it? It was, yeah, essential services. So, you know, gas, electricity, water, you know, home internet and stuff. So, you know, having that business run and, you know, you had access to run a business in 25 countries, it, it, it was pretty amazing, you know. People didn't get why I was so excited, but look, you know, I've joined a business in one country and it opened up doors for me in 25 countries. Do you think I'm complaining? No, I'm not complaining. I've got a business that runs in 25 countries. What, what are you saying? You know, um, it was pretty exciting then. And, you know, I got, I got to learn a lot from that. And then in due time, I had to leave that. But, you know, it was just, you could see the difference. You could see the difference in, you know, the different rules and regulations in Australia, you know, Canada, Philippines, you know, Mexico and all that. And you're just like, damn. And then at some point, you know, you then realize, you stop and you look at how much are you actually making, you know, back home in Zimbabwe and how much you're making in Australia. And then you realize you're making more money in Zimbabwe than in Australia. Then what do you do? You come back home. Here we are. <laughs> okay. I actually thought you were making more money there than here for a while. No, I'll tell you this. People who are working nine to five or people that were, you know, you know, picking up a lot of shifts, they, they probably even make more money than me now, mm -hmm. right? But me, my own capacity, someone who didn't want to be working for someone else, who hated shift work, although I had an easy job, I just didn't like shift work and I just didn't like being ordered around, you know, and, you know, someone bribing me with a salary. I was like, nah. So, yeah, that's how we ended up back here. But there is money to be made out there. It's just, you know, what are you cut out for? Are you cut out for eight to five? Cool. Then do eight to five. I've got no problem with that. And we all can't be entrepreneurs. Who's going to work? Who's going to work for us? You know, if yes. we're going to need people who are going to work. We need people that are dedicated nine to five you know, or, you know, nine to nine, whatever you want to call it, you know, to keep the business running. So, yeah. Okay, so you said you joined a marketing company, right? Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah. Do you have any three marketing tips for us? Marketing Only tips? Three. <laughs> three. Hmm. Good question. Actually, list, uh, number one, Listen more, listen more, uh -huh. speak less, because less is always more. That, that's, def that's definitely key. I learned that because when we're doing our pitch, there's a point where after you said one thing, the next person to talk is the one that loses. That's what the, my mentor used to tell me. The next person to talk is the one that loses. So you'd say to you pitch, 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 and then you get to a point where you'd be like, can I put you down? If I say anything after that, I've lost. I've lost. But, you know, the person is in a position where they're either saying yes or no most of the time. So, yeah, L listen more, talk less. Um, number two, just be yourself. Be yourself and be genuinely concerned. Be genuinely concerned because people really care about people that care about them. If you show some, if you show customers that you care about them they're going to take care of you some people will sign up simply because you know or buy your product simply because you were nice to them you know like i've done it so many times i'm just walking someone says to me hi sir i like your shirt um how's your day going oh you looked a little bit down but if your day is going great oh, okay cool and you know they're not even trying to sell me what they're holding and i'm like what are you selling and then i end up buying I end up signing up for stuff. So yeah, number three, what is number three? 
you put me on the spot with this one. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, just 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 be different. Be different. That, that's it. You know, find what works for you and stick to it. Find what works for you and stick to it. Know exactly what you're talking about. Because that's the one thing that I know about most customers. They've got the knowledge that they're given by a certain like by a certain company. But when it comes to, you know, just the products they have, you know, what the, do the products do? You know, can they be matched with something else? You need to know all that. So know your stuff and then find common ground, find what works for you and stick to it and everything will go great from there. Okay. Yeah. Those and, are okay. So you said something about um, loving challenges, right? And yeah. you said you love negotiating, right? I, I like I mean, signing. I don't like negotiating. <laughs> You're like, oh, yes, you said you like signing. So do you have any three negotiation tips for us? Three. Hmm. Sorry about that. Oof. Negotiating tips. You know what's funny? Now that I think about it, I don't, I don't do much negotiating. You wanna know why? Why? Because if I come to you with something and I tell you that the price is this, if I come to you with something and I tell you that the price is $1,000, I believe the price is $1,000. And more often than not, if you want to negotiate that price down, you know, without giving extra value in one way or the other, to be honest, I'm probably gonna walk away from the table. That, that's how I function. That's how I actually function. Because if it's $1,000, $1,000. I believe it's $1,000. And if you believe what I'm saying, then buy it for $1,000. Otherwise, you're not the target market and now I'm moving away. Yeah. But um, when negotiating, don't, don't, don't be put in a corner. Don't, don't be put in a corner. Don't be boxed in a corner. Oh, yeah, actually. Don't sound How do you desperate. avoid that? Just, you know. How do you stand avoid firm. that? that is stand firm. You know, if anything, overprice something and then bring it down to the price you really want. I do that a lot. I'll come out and say, look, um, this is $1,200. Person will obviously negotiate. Um, I'm like, you know what? Okay, cool. Uh, okay, we'll drop it by by 100 And then they keep negotiating. I'm like, you know what? I'll do you one better, right? $1,000 and let's call it a day. Take it or leave it. What was my initial price? My initial price was $1,000. I've got my thousand dollars. Am I complaining? No, I'm not. And don't negotiate for too long. Number two, don't negotiate for too long. Don't sound, don't sound desperate. Don't sound desperate because the one with the power is the one, you know, the one who's in control is the one with the power to walk away. So if you sound desperate, look, I'm, I'm, if you come desperate, if you come here looking desperate, I'm going to run circles all over you until I get what I want. But if you're standing firm and you're confident in what you're saying, then you know what, you know, it's going to be a good negotiation because there's no intimidation. You know, you can tell someone is confident about what they're saying. They are, they believe in what, they, they, what they're selling. Then you're good. And negotiating numbers, number three, negotiating one-on-one. Hmm, I'll think about that. Let me think of the third one because I don't really negotiate much. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think most of it, most of when it comes to negotiating, most of it is based on desperation. Just do not look desperate. Don't sound desperate. Don't do that. So I'll give you two for today. The next time I'll give you another one. How about that? Okay. That's fine. So you're in so many industries. You're in the finance industry. You're in, you're in the tech industry. You're at the sport industry. Why so many industries? Well, because of exposure, I got exposed to a lot of things, right? So I'm in so many industries because I don't do it alone. I've got partnerships in almost, I don't think there's actually, there's only one company that I own 100% of, which is um, Kacheri Capital Group. You know, that's, uh, that's my mini hedge fund. Otherwise, everything else, it's all partnerships. Um, because obviously, I, I can't be there 24-7. But I partner with people that can, 
I partner with people that can um, that are really passionate about certain things. So I may have the idea, but I'm not really passionate about it. But if I partner with someone who's passionate about it, then you know they can you know they can obviously you know lead us better. So yeah, and yeah, because of exposure, I just learned so much, and there's so much that can be done. There's so much, but I also had to limit myself because I have got gang ideas. If I show you, I've actually got a book right here. You see. Uh, there you go. Here's my diary. You see, all these are new ideas, yes. but 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 I have not, I've not, I've not executed any new ideas. I had to stop myself and you know, you know, just figure out what can I handle for now, and then do that, and then I'll move on to the next thing. But yeah, and you know, if you're in a, in a unique place where you can, you know, where you can have partnerships, then you know, get it done get it done because you know there's no stopping and i've always never believed in working on one thing i don't know why i don't know because i feel like i can't work on one thing 24 hours a day that does not work for me i can't my mind races way too quick to be working on one thing 24 hours a day my mom was always saying to me one touching one it's touching one chip i'm like yeah it will take me 10 years to build one company but i can build like what if i can build three because i've got two 24 hours in a day i can sacrifice 18 of those hours you know dedicate you know six hours to each company it works for me so yeah i just do me to be honest so yeah that's why so many industries because yeah i, okay. I don't know I just, I okay you said um you said something about you know operating your business from australia yeah and your business was best here right so my next question is so when COVID-19 came right you already yeah. had systems in place right to do online business yeah so you really didn't get that much affected it was business as usual for you in some industries yes so take for example um we own we own two cricket oh, well, we own a cricket team now we were going to own two, but now we only own one. We own one cricket team and we have a hockey team. So take, for example, so in the sporting industry, if the, if the guys are not on the park, then, you know, there, there's no business for us. You know, um, so that was a bit of a problem. You can't do online sport, but we, we, we made it work. We got the interviews, paid interviews online and everything. You just had to, you know, you just had to work around it. But, um, yeah. you know, entertainment was also a problem because like, take, for example, um, our partners were supposed to bring in Burner Boy last year. You know, we're so excited about that. And, you know, we were obviously going to make a killing from it, but, you know, we, we that didn't end up happening. So, which was a problem. And, you know, trying to organize an online show, yeah, nah, didn't really work out. So some of the businesses, yes, they were affected, but then look, since I'm, in, <laughs> since I'm into the finance, like in the finance industry, like finance was booming. Finance last year was booming. So, yeah and then people just had to adjust we all had to adjust in one way or the other even in the finance industry because one day you'd wake up analyze the market and then next thing there's a new vaccine and then everything's just going left and then you've got bitcoin trying to take over the world and then you've got so much going on but look at the end of the day you adjust you move you, you just keep it moving you just don't yeah, complain that's that's one thing mm -hmm. keep it moving don't complain simple Okay. I'm gonna write that. Keep moving. Don't complain. So, if you were to give uh, one piece of advice to someone who is just starting out, what would it be? Figure out your reason why. Right. I'll actually, I'll say two things to them. Definitely, I'll say two things to them. The one thing I love saying is, start where you are. I've always said this. I say this in any interview, any podcast I go on to. Start where you are. And number two, figure out your reason why. Because your reason why will be the fuel that will take you to the finish line. Because once you figure out the reason why you're doing something, do you think I'm ever going to quit on my parents? No, I'm not. So do you think it's necessary for me to wake up every day and come to work? Yes, it's necessary because I want to get to my goal. But think about it. If my reason was money. See, funny enough, people think that money, making money, if they say I want to make money, it's a reason why that's big enough. If I wake up and I'm like, I want to make money, but I've still got $1,000 in my pocket, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to continue sleeping. 
because I can always make money the next day or I can find another way to make money. But if I know that I need to grow my business, I need to be there present in order for my parents to retire, then I'm going to be here. So figure out your reason why, stick to it. It'll take you to the finish line. Those are the two things I'll say to anyone who's starting up. If you don't have a reason why, that's why you see that some people will start up three, four companies in one year. Next year, they'll do the exact same thing. It's because their reason why is not big enough. Find, find out your reason why. Find something that you are passionate about, something that you can do, and then just get it done. Okay. So yeah. can you describe your typical day? My typical day? Well, look, all things being normal, my typical day would start off with um, definitely, you know, a morning devotion, um, you know, me listening to one of my books and a bit of, you know, kind of, I usually plan the night before. So I kind of know what exactly I'm doing, but my PA will always remind me like, yo, this is what we're doing today and all that. And then um, I know this is a bad habit. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't really eat breakfast. Um, but um, I've now got Herbalife, so I just I take breakfast in the form of um, liquid. But um, yeah, breakfast, and then we go to work. We, and then we just grind it out, literally just meetings after meetings. And I will sit down with anyone and everyone because you never know who you know who will give you value here and there. And I like move, even during the day. And if I feel like I'm spent during the day and I want to go and play golf, I'm going to go and play golf. I'm going to cancel everything else. I'm going to go and play golf because that's what I want to do. You know, like, so my day is, is random. It's randomized. It's just how, how am I feeling? How am I feeling at that point? And then we do just that. So yeah. And then in the evening, um, obviously I spend time, time, obviously during the day, I don't get time to spend with family, but if family's around, I spend time with family, spend time with my girlfriend. And then, Yeah. We work throughout and then, yeah, but we don't stop trading. We're always trading. We're always on the markets. But yeah, that's that's a typical day for me. And then we spill over. I usually have meetings around 1, 2 a.m. because of American time difference and all that. We just spill over and then we keep it going. So, okay. yeah, that's a typical. I think, Yeah. <laughs> Jim used to be a part of it. Jim used to be a part of it, but not anymore. Why? Oh, I've, I've got that. I've got that boyfriend fat going on. <laughs> okay, so you said you're a Christian, right? Yes. And have have you ever was there ever a moment in your life where you know your faith clashed with say? Um, something that you wanted to do in business. Yeah, um, funny. Right now, I'm in a I'm in a big debate. I'm in a big debate with myself. I'm in a big debate with my mom constantly. Um, I'm starting. Well, I'm opening up a. We're trying to open up a club, a nightclub in SA in South Africa. But yeah, it just goes against everything that I believe in. To be honest, it, it really does. And I don't even know if I'm supposed to tithe money from a nightclub. <laughs> so it's a big debate. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm still praying on it. I, I don't even know if I should do it or not, but it happens constantly. There's a time I wanted to open a bottle store you know, and sell alcohol and all that. But uh, yeah, I used to drink. I don't drink anymore. Uh, but, you know, all those things. So it's just always a big debate. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But... <laughs> Yeah, it's um, fun times, interesting times, actually. It's always clashing, but, you know, we make it work. I pray on it, and then sometimes the answers take longer than, than usual, but, hey, you just got to do what's got to be done. So I don't know. If I do end up opening the club, I'll tell you, but I doubt at this point. And the worst part is it's already registered in everything. You know, we've done everything. We've already got, we've got the place. All we need to do now is open the club, but no. Now you, you're in a conflict. Yeah, getting cold feet happens all the time. Okay, so um, thank you so much for gracing the show today, Willard. So before you go, do you have any parting words for us? 
I want to say to you guys, I'm going to repeat this again. Start where you are. Right. That's the number one. Number two, in whatever you do, right, those who care, if anything goes wrong, if anything goes sideways, right, if, if you've got people that are looking out for you and they genuinely care, that's great. But I want you guys to understand that at some point, right, there's certain things that happen in your life where those people who care about you are not supposed to mind at all. You know, you get to a scenario where it's those who care don't matter and those who matter don't care. You need to differentiate between those two because I think that's where, that's where we lose it most of the time. That's where most... Um, that's where most youngsters lose it, you know, because we're surrounded with so many people, you know, some people are congratulating us and everything. So take, for example, for me, right. I, I just have like recently, recently, I just had something going on. I just had something going on. And before people even found out the truth about what was going on, you know, it was all over, you know, some people were judging me. This is one kid, you know, this one kid fascinated me because I don't even know him, but clearly he knows me. Right. Mm -hmm. So he slides into my DMs, message goes straight to requests. I open up the message and, you know, he's saying whatever he's saying, you know, and I see that he does like sport. But crazy enough, I am going to own the team he plays for in the next two months. So how do you think that's good? That situation is going to play out. I own the team that you play for. You're going to need my money to be able to further your career. But you're in my DMs commenting on things that you don't know. I'm just like, you know, so guys, look, you know, mind your own business and just make sure that the people around you are people who genuinely care about you and, you know, listen to their opinions and, you know, everything else is just noise, block everything else, just keep going and, you know, don't give up, don't give up, find your reason why, keep going, don't give up because trust me, life is just different when you do what you want, when you achieve your goals and everything it's, life is just different life is great and don't be pressured you know instant gratification is not is not is not a currency at all you know but delayed gratification is a currency because that will last forever build an empire build a legacy that will last then be glorified then be glorified now for instagram you know be glorified now on Instagram and all these social media things. Just be you, keep it going, and yeah, you be good. And if I can help you in any way, you know, if you want me to be on your show, if you want to be on my podcast, whatever, guys, just, you know, slide into my DMs, see what we can do. I've even got a WhatsApp number. Just WhatsApp that number, and then we'll take it from there because I'm always willing. I'm always willing. I'm going to leave you guys with one thing that I learned from from Australia. My mentor introduced me to Zig Ziglar and Zig Ziglar says, if you want to get to where you want in life, or in order to get to where you want in life, help other people get to where they want first. So I'm always willing to, you know, do stuff for other people because somewhere, somehow, I feel like it betters me and it, it moves me closer to my goal. So yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It was such an honor being here. And you're a great host, by the way. Thank you. So, for those of you who don't know Wheeland, guys, you can follow him on IG. His username is Wheeland Kachere. And then he also has a website. It's uh, www.wheelandkachere.com, right? Yeah, yeah. It's quite uh, Twitter handle. All my handles are just at Wheeland Kachere on across any platform whatsoever. If you just type at Willard Kajira, it'll pop up. Okay, so... It's a TikTok. TikTok, I'm will okay, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so thank you so much. And so, we'll see you next week. Same time, same place.